Alright, so we all much um, um, This one is six reason why people self-harm by none other than psychedelics. Let's check it out in three, two, one, go. Hey there, Psych2Goers. Before we begin, we would like to mention that this video was created with the intention of educating the community and supporting anyone that may be at risk of self-harm so that they may feel safe to seek help. As the topic of this video might be triggering for some, please be mindful in the comment section and help us make this a supportive and safe space for all. So, what is self-harm? Self-harm includes anything you do to intentionally injure yourself. Here are six potential reasons why people self-harm. One, to feel something else. Oftentimes, when someone feels the need to self-harm, they're also feeling another strong emotion, whether it be anger, depression, or frustration. Physical pain, however, can be distracting. To them, the sensations of self-harm act as a temporary alternative to the emotional distress in order to avoid directly addressing the source. Two, to feel anything at all. Sometimes though, someone feels so numb or drained of all feeling that they long to feel anything at all. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, self-harm temporarily fills a void and provides a sensation when someone feels empty, detached, or lethargic. The pain acts as a symbol of the emotional suffering that some are unable to experience. Three, to have a sense of control. A lot of anxiety and other symptoms of mental distress arise from feeling out of control over one's life. The choice to self-harm, however, is under their control. Feeling in the lead of one's own life and decisions is a comfort in itself, which may be why some make the choice to self-harm. This might make them feel in charge of their choices, their body, and even their life. However, this is a maladaptive coping strategy, which only serves to continue the disorder rather than healing it. Four, it feels like a relief. When someone is overwhelmed with feelings, the emotional release that comes from self-harm can feel a lot like relief. Despite any physical discomfort it might cause, the rush of hurting oneself can feel as cathartic as a hard workout. This may be why so many who self-harm once continue to do so. According to the Mayo Clinic, however, while self-injury can bring a momentary sense of calm and a release of tension, it's usually followed by guilt and shame and the return of the painful emotions. Five, it's a form of self-punishment. Unfortunately, some who self-harm do so as a form of self-punishment. They may believe that they deserve to feel the pain or that they've brought their own suffering upon themselves. Perhaps they hope that feeling physical pain will dismiss the emotional pain or that they'll become a better person by hurting themselves voluntarily. And six, it's a way to communicate feelings without words. Feelings are not easy to talk about, especially if you're having intense emotions like those that can lead to self-harm. For some, hurting themselves is a way of asking for help or expressing their distress without having to use words. For example, someone told mind.org, I've learned that as my emotional needs were not being met, I used self-harm because I didn't know how to express myself or say what I needed or what I wanted. Hey guys, it's Yumi here, one of the partners of Psych2Go. I hope everyone is doing well, especially during this time. But good news is life is slowly getting back to normal and the world is opening up again. Um, I actually have a special announcement to make and that is we are launching our second channel called Psych2Go Education. So, you know, over time, we realize that a lot of people are, are looking for advice. And even though we're not professionals, we want to do whatever we can to satisfy you guys, right? It's because of you guys that made us happen. So, definitely, we want to give back. So, Psych2Go is going to be more focused on psychology, mental health, and awareness. Whereas Psych2Go Education is going to be focused more on advice-like. So for example, Psych2Go is seven signs you have a toxic parent, whereas Psych2Go education is going to be like, how do you deal with the toxic parent? So we are launching our second channel and we are super, super excited about it. We wanna give back to you guys. We wanna keep expanding and you know, what better time to do it than in 2020, right? So I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below with a new channel. So follow us here at Psych2Go and jump on there somewhere on the screen and follow us over there at Psych2Go Education, okay? So until next time, 
Hi guys, and thank you so, so, so much for all of your support. Do you relate to any of the reasons mentioned? If you feel like you or a loved one are at risk of self-harming behaviors, please don't be afraid to speak up and seek help. In our description box below, we've provided some resources that may come in handy, such as the crisis text line. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more helpful tips and share this video with others. It might just save someone from hurting themselves. As always, thank you for supporting our videos and the Psych2Go community. See you in our next video, and thanks for watching.